Hey, you've been watching the news with all these tech layoffs? Got you worried? I'm going to tell you what you need to do and why you don't need to panic. So you're watching the news and you see Twitter lays off half their workforce. Meta lays off 11,000 employees. And it's seeming like all the tech companies are employed and they're all laying off people. And you're wondering, how does this impact me? What should I do? And I'm going to tell you right now what you need to think about doing is skill up, not skill down. Now, when these layoffs and the economy happens and recessions happens, these cycles happen to us, our natural reaction, and everyone does this, is to withdraw, pull back, and just see what's going to happen. In fact, a lot of people are sending us messages saying, hey, I'm going to stop my search. I'm going to quit learning. I'm going to quit all of these things because I don't know what's going to happen. And what I want you to think about is you should skill up in the downturn and not skill down. All right. And what I mean by that is don't quit learning at this point because you think the job prospects aren't as certain as they were maybe three or six months ago. What I want you to understand is when these downturns happen and they always happen, this has been going on for years. We go through cycles, things downturn, companies go down and you need to think about what am I going to do in the future? Where's my future going to hold? Now I was looking at CNBC. And they listed the top five jobs still today. And this is right after the layoffs for Meta, right after layoffs for Twitter and all of these other announcements that have happened. And you know what the number two job was still software. The number one job was nursing. Now think about this for a second. If something happened in healthcare and there's a downturn in healthcare and you were writing code in the healthcare industry, you could simply move to another industry. If you're a nurse and something happens, you've got to reskill and reeducate it. So software impacts every economic segment in our economy, every segment, every sector has software development in it. And therefore, if something goes wrong in a particular sector, you can simply move to another sector and still write code. So let's look at social media companies. And this is primarily what we're talking about. Big tech, social media companies, they're going through some challenges. There's some challenges with selling ads on these platforms. So Twitter's facing challenges, Meta's facing challenges. But even if your entire career is devoted to um, Meta or Twitter, you simply will move to a different segment in the economy, but you're still writing software. And that's gonna be true for the time being. For the foreseeable future, our um, companies and our industries will be more connected, not less connected, which means there's gonna be more software written, not less software written. And that means there's more opportunities for you. The biggest mistake you can make is to pull back. That's the natural reaction. That's what we wanna do. And so don't panic and say, well, I'm just gonna quit my learning. We've had people mention this to us on our YouTube channel that they were saying that, hey, with all these layoffs, is a senior dev going to come in and take my junior dev job? Should I just not even apply anymore? Because I'm going to be competing against people with five, 10 years of experience to get that software job. What I want you to understand is there's entry level positions and a senior isn't competing for an entry level position. They're, the economy isn't that bad where they have to take a 75% pay cut to take your junior dev job to do things that they're overqualified to do. That's simply not happening. They're simply gonna switch companies to a different company. Most of the engineering talent that left Facebook or left Twitter, if they want to, have jobs. And it's very easy for these people to move around. Now, all layoffs are pressured and everything is, you can get concerned, but if you're an engineer and you're adding value to the company, even if you get laid off, you're gonna find somewhere else to go. That means for you breaking in, they're not competing for that job that you're still trying to be trained to do. It's still going to be entry level jobs out there for people that are skilled like you to break in. So the job market continues to be strong. And even at the time of this recording, we are still placing people right out of our boot camp and in the entry level positions, regardless of what the tech segment um, seemingly looks like from the aspect of a news organization or if you're reading about it on Twitter and all these things are going, at, are, are going away, the, the bubble has burst and all this kind of things. All right, so let's talk about the things that we can do to make sure that we're in the best possible position to find a software job, whether that is this week or three months from now. Maybe you're just starting your learning journey. What are the things that I need to do right now 
to find a job. What if you find yourself laid off? What are the types of things that I need to do? The first thing you need to do is invest in you, which means you need to learn something um, new. And so your skills as they stand today, whether whether you're up here as a junior level or you're all the way up to the senior level, they should be better three months from now. You should know more things or investigate other things. That means you need to invest in the skills that you have, improve those, don't stand pat. Don't wait around for things to improve before you go on um, learning something new. Invest in you today. And that means you need to build something. You need to start building something. So if you find yourself unemployed or you're still looking for a job, you need to be constantly be building things because the number one thing that you can have to get that next software job is a great portfolio. And so we need to have our portfolio game needs to be really strong. So I need you to build something that you can put on that portfolio to show an employer. And we call this proof of work. Now, if you're coming in, you have five to 10 years experience, you may not need to do this, but if you're a junior trying to break in for the first time and you've never held a software job before, you need something you can show that employer on your portfolio that they can look at either passively or during the interview process. So let's talk about that interview game it needs to be better than it is right now. Now, if you've gone through some interviews and you failed and you're thinking, oh, the reason I'm getting turned down is because there's too much competition for my skills. No, you need to be better at interviewing. And let's talk about taking that project and then demoing that project during the interview process. I have seen students fail technical interviews. They missed actual questions that they should have known, but because they demoed during that interview process, they still won because the proof of work is strong. I mean, it's very difficult to turn someone down when you see something they've actually built and you can justify, well, the reason they didn't know those interview questions was because, you know, maybe they were nervous or I asked them something, the question wasn't clear, uh, wasn't clear and that gives you the benefit of the doubt during the interview process when you show something that you have built. So we need to build stuff, put it on your portfolio and then make sure your interviews are turning into demos, which means you take any of your question you get and try to demo the answer with your code. And that's gonna make you a much stronger um, candidate when you're looking for roles, trying to either come back from a layoff or you're just trying to break in for the first time. If you can interview with a demo, you're gonna do a whole lot better. Now, the other thing is recruiters. I see a lot, even now in the downturns, people complaining about recruiters calling them all the time. And so now's the time where you need to build those relationships, invest in you by building relationships with the recruiters. So if they call you and they say, Hey, do you want to um, do this senior level job for with react? And you're like, I'm an iOS developer. Like I don't do that. And so a lot, what our common thing is I'm going to be mad at the recruiter. I'm going to complain about recruiters. Didn't even look at my profile before they called me. Well, I want you to understand this recruiters typically look for more than one job at a time. So if you get one on the phone or you get an email or a reach out, instead of blowing them off and being mad about their lack of research, call them back, have a conversation, say, you know, I'm, I'm not really into React, but this is what I do. And tell them about your skills, show them portfolio, give them something to shop an employer with so that you can be lined up with the job that does match your skills. And so they're like, oh, okay, well, I was looking for this, but I'm also looking for this web dev job. Maybe you're a fit for that. And tell them why you're a fit. Give them three reasons why you think you're gonna win an interview that they present you at. And that's where you say, I'm gonna add value to make the job, the recruiter's job easier by saying, here's the value I'm gonna add during the interview process. I'm going to show them these projects and give them something to pitch an employer. And that's gonna make you the most valuable person that you can be. And you can get that next software job. You can come back from a layoff. You can break in for the very first time. So the other thing that we can do to put ourselves in the best possible position, whether that's from a layoff, or you're trying to break in for the first time, and you feel like, oh, it's an economy downturn, what can I do? I want you to think about your socials and this is Twitter. This is your LinkedIn. This is all the things where you communicate to others with is be positive. And so even if you see bad things going on at Meta or bad things going on at Twitter, our inclination is to go ahead and comment on those things in a negative fashion. So oh, this guy's an idiot or this person's bad or this is bad or you have a bad interview 
and you go out and you say, okay, the interview process is terrible. I'm never going to find a job. I want you to think about this. Always be positive. No matter what you're talking about, no matter how bad it gets or whatever you think is be positive. Now you're going to find when you talk negatively about different companies or whatever, you're going to find a group think. And a lot of people are going to say, yeah, that's right. But that's typically not the person you're talking to. You're talking to that potential hiring manager in those social media. So I want you to stay positive in social media. Talk about the things that you do, the things that you're doing. And even if you mention, hey, in these struggling times, I'm building something new. This is what I'm doing. And so you can spend this in a positive way to make sure that that next hiring manager that happens to see your tweet or your post on LinkedIn, they're like, okay, I'd like to work with that guy. That person has a positive attitude. And so even in times of distress, they still look forward to the future and they still see the future as a bright place. Instead of focusing on the negative aspects of everything that's going on, focus on the things that you're doing, the things that you're gonna do to come out on the other end of this as a better programmer, a better developer, where you can add value to the next company that you're hired at. So speaking of adding value, I want you to think about this um, as you are working somewhere, let's say you're already employed now, or you're trying to get that first value, uh, that first job. I want you to think of the value that you bring to the organization. So let's say you're working in a challenge situation, you don't know what's gonna happen at the company. The, the thing is you complain about upper management, you can do that. You can complain about the working conditions, you can complain about these things, or you can add lots of value. I, here's what I, I've known from life and as I work through life, if you're a value add to the organization, you're less likely to get laid off. Now that doesn't mean that some exceptional people didn't get caught up in the layoffs at Facebook and Twitter. Of course they did. That's just a cost cutting move and it does happen. But the value add people typically are harder to cut because they're always adding value. And so let's talk about some of the things that happened in the last you know two years that became popular was overemployment. And there's like complete Reddit threads and groups and things and people taking more than one job at once, you know? And so they're working 40 hours a week at three locations. And so they're not really adding the max value that they can. And that has to do a lot of with the pandemic, lack of oversight from companies. It could be remote work does contribute to this. And so like we have all these people that aren't really adding value that they could. And so they get caught up in layoffs in these kind of situations. And so what I want you to think about is being a value adder to the organization if you currently have a job. The next thing I want you to think about, if you're trying to break in for the first time or you're still looking for work, come up with three value adds that you can bring to the organization and put that in all of your pitches, whether that is a direct pitch to an employer on LinkedIn or a pitch to a recruiter and say, I'm gonna bring these three values to this organization when you hire me. And that could be commitment to excellence, commitment to hard work, ethics, all of those things can be the value adds that you bring in, but you need to express those to people and they need to come out in all of your social media communications, Twitter, LinkedIn, all these things, the value that you're gonna bring to an organization. And I think that's gonna get you well on your way to landing your job or coming out in a better situation than you are right now. So let's sum this up. We need to skill up, not skill down. We don't need to withdraw at this point. We need to be investing in ourselves, building things. We need to have a portfolio. We need to be working with recruiters and we need to turn those interview opportunities we have into demos. Also, we need to stay positive on social media. The positivity helps us getting future employment as well as managing expectations with ourselves at this point. Stay positive, things are gonna be okay. And here's what I wanna leave you with. These downturns do happen and it happens in every amount of cycles. And if you get to be the age that I am now, you've seen several of these and we always come back. This will be a cycle. There will be a new hiring, a new golden age for tech if you wanna talk about it. All of these things will turn around and if you have the right skills at the right moment and you increase your skills versus where you're at today, you're going to be in position to land those jobs. So skill up, not skill down. Well, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.